Alrighty, I am ready. I am back. Let's get started. Alrighty, now where's my where's my DOS box folder? There it is. There we go. Just about ready. <laughs> Love that too. All right, let's restore our game. Snail problem, and we fix the snail problem. Now, what's going on here? Look out, Freddy! Engines! No, wait! This one's an Indian! A real Indian! Oh, from India! From India! The Indian sits atop an anthill surrounded by swarms of ants. He looks trapped. You feel sorry for him. If only there were some way you could help him. May I help you down? While I appreciate your offer here, I must remain here. I simply cannot harm an ant, and I can presently assert no effective way of means of dismounting this ant hill without hurting another living creature. Oh dear. Hmm, well, how are we gonna help them? Hello, stranger. I haven't seen you around these parts before. I know it's none of my business, but why are you sitting on top of the inactive anthill in the heat of this semi-desert sun? Oh, my former foe, I am but a weary traveler from a land far, far away, journeying here peacefully merely to experience the curative powers of your local mineral waters. The other members of my stagecoach party claiming a frustration with my excessive verbosity and sequi sesquipedalian inclinations forcefully place me in my current sitting position on this lovely feature of your landscape. Knowing full well that because of religious reasons, I would be unable to climb down myself. How cruel those Yosemite-bound tourists are! My name is Frederick Farkas. I own the local pharmacy here in Horsehold. How do you do, Mr. Farkas? My name is Srini Lalaka Bangish. Pardon me if I don't get up. Hmm, you think to yourself. I've been considering taking on a loyal Indian sidekick. <laughs> I'm seeking a new assistant down at the pharmacy. Would you be considering a le relocation to this area? You know, Course Gold offers extremely reasonable housing costs and an abundance of sunny weather. Well, no, not really, but yes, perhaps it would be willing. But as you can readily see, I'm quite busy at the current moment. I am here standing by myself beside. What can I to, to do? Have you considered climbing down and walking away? I cannot possibly do that. Life is sacred. If I were to move, I should undoubtedly interest some of these small six-legged platforms. I'm sure some of them will come along soon to the aid of me. I'll see what I can do, Serini. I know exactly what we do. The school ladder that we stole. I've got it, Serini. I know how I can help you. <laughs> Here you go, partner. Hook your way across this. Ooh, my balance is so, so stretching now. You made it! Ah, oh, yeah. We helped him out. You're stepping on some of the ants right there. It's, oh, we get a hug. Oh, thank you, Mr. P. You saved me. Please don't call me that. Thank you again, Mr. F. I am so grateful. Oh, grateful enough to ex accept this assistance position I mentioned earlier? I could u really use some help around the shop. I would be honored. Where do I begin? So Freddy headed on back to the pharmacy, followed by the eternally grateful Serena Lalakabish. Seems like Freddy not only found himself a new assistant in that pharmacy, but also a good friend as well. Yay! 
So I've been thinking about hiring an assistant to help me around the store clean up, you know, the usual chores. Think you'd be interested? Oh, I'd be highly grateful to heading <laughs> over to display me such a position. Would you be offering as well a form of payment? I'll pay you ten cents a day and all the rustler stoves chocolates you can eat. <laughs> chocolates. That is an agreement! Excellent. Um, uh, what was your name again? Srini Lalaka English, but you may call me Srini. And I will be calling you Freddy. Okay? Okay. Now let's get cracking, Srini. I'd like you to go out there and create some nice displays for the skin lotions. We may be closed temporarily, but we'll be opening up sooner or later, and we've got to be ready. What it is, Freddy. I will be getting on that now. There he goes. And we save. We'll save this as... Screeny saved. Hooray. Now let's walk out. Mind the store, Streamy. I'm off to uphold justice and stuff. <laughs> I missed what he said. Oops. I hate when I accidentally click over something. No, I didn't mean to scratch him. What's going on here? Okay. Back outside we go. Wait a minute. So there's the back entrance. Oh my goodness. What is going on here? Holy cow, you've never seen such a long line at the outhouse. Something's wrong in the state of coarse gold bowels. How long can she hold it? Not long if she keeps bouncing like that. This one appears to be practicing the jitterbug. He's really gotta make... You haven't seen this long a line at the outhouse since the day Mom served her famous chicken sushi with egg tartare. Gotta keep walking! Well, there's the church. Gotta keep moving. Freddy, move faster. Oh, so they're digging something. Digging up the grave. Aw. Someone died. It don't say nothing, it just keeps rolling along. <laughs> of course I try to talk to a tumbleweed. Do, 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 do. Let's talk to people around. Around mm, the town. Sam, anything unusual going on? A lot of my customers have headed out to the outhouse to wash their hands, or so they say. That can't be so odd. Well, usually they just wash their hands out against the side of the building. Must be a number two kind of thing. Hmm. Let's talk to Doc. Hey Doc, don't you think he ought to sober up? There's a lot of sick people in this town and they need your attention. Rich, rich, empty, simulating the consistency. But this swish is snow acting. It may take a while before I reach a level of discomfort. <laughs> okay. Well, let's uh, check out Mom's Cafe. Mom, where are all your customers? Damn if I know! They all jumped up or at more or less the same time and ran to the outhouse. It's not my fault though. They haven't even eaten yet. They just had a glass of water and BAM! They're gone! Okay, so it's the water. You tell anyone about it, you dead hook meat on a hook. That sounds fair. 
Hey, Hop Sing, don't serve any water till I've had the chance to check it out. I think something's up with the water supply. No problem, it's California. We not serve water with meals unless customer beg. <laughs> well. Let's see if there's if we can get any more hints from anyone. Willie, I got myself an assistant down at the pharmacy. What the Sam hell you need an assistant for, kid? The sheriff done closed your store down. Well, I've been so busy helping people and stuff, I was hoping to reopen the store soon, so I thought... You thought, eh? Well, that's a first. Anyhow, the assistant might come in handy eventually. But for the time being, head on out to the outhouse and figure out what's going on out there. Seems like half the town's got them big time runs. The what? I says get! <laughs> well, let's go to O'Hanahan's. Congratulate me, Sal. I've got an assistant now. So I hear. Did you maybe do Can you maybe. So now maybe you can do something about this town's work supply, eh? He's the only Irish Italian. One thing at a time. I'm on the case, okay? Mm. Let's talk to the sheriff. I don't like the sheriff, by the way. Sheriff, I know you couldn't care less, but folks around town are having some sort of mysterious stomach ailment. Well, guess the water in these parts gone is not sour. Ain't no surprise. Really, we're bound to have it sooner or later. I figure those that don't die from the dysentery will just have to pull up stakes and find some place where the water's good. I don't think that's it at all. I think someone's poisoned the water. If you were any kind of sheriff, you'd look into it. <laughs> like you know anything about being a sheriff. Besides, I know the water ain't poison. I had some myself a while ago. I'm gonna cure this poor folks of this town if it's the last thing I do. Yep, and it's gonna be the last thing you do if and you don't stop messing around with the fine people of Corks Gold. Messing around? I'm trying to save them, damn it. You cussing me one more time and I'll throw you in jail so you'll be begging me to let you quit, restore or restart. <laughs> Apologize. That's better, see? Now we can all be friends. Well, only one thing to do now. You return. Yep. It is good to look upon your eternally smiling countenance of a face again. Yeah, yeah, I missed you too. Alright, now it's time. Let's solve this as water problem. Not two. Now I gotta get the medicine thing up. We gotta find something to do with a. Gotta find a way to cure a diarrhea, basically. <laughs> Let's see. We're a pharmacist. We can do something. Twenty-five of bismuth. Not bismuth. Biz. Gotta make sure it's the right bismuth. Bismuth salad. Subs. Subsalably. Now we need or. Phenomethaldride, whatever. Or phenomethaldride. I'm, I'm just gonna assume it's that. So we need a beaker. We need not a test tube. 
graduated cylinder. We need five of that. 25 of that, I mean. Put it in the beaker. Now, we just need five milliliters of that. Put it in the beaker. It's mixed up. Let's uh, turn on the alcohol the lamp. How do we turn it on again? Oh, matches. Pfft. How do we heat it over? The chemical warms slowly over the alcohol lamp. Now it's getting pretty hot. Good thing your calluses are thick. Chemical rapidly reaches a full roiling boil. Pour into a bottle. And cork. Well, that was a fun experiment, but it's not going to help you out of your present mess. You throw it all away as you exit your lab. What? Do I need to drink the water? Fine then, I'll do that. Or something. Okie the dokie. Okay, so that's what he says. Okie the dokie. What's with all this baking soda? A gigantic pile of 50 pound sacks of baking soda fills the sidewalk in front of your store, nearly blocking the entrance. Baking soda is the Legand Hammer brand, famous for the, named for the famous internationalist industrialist. The slogan keeps one sack in the smokehouse and another in the stable to help it keep it clean and fresh smelling. Score. Summoning your superhuman strength, you heft the huge piles of baking soda. And with a horrible, wrenching, tearing, tearing sound, you cram the sacks of baking soda into your pants pocket. Logic! <laughs> Let's look carefully here. There's a spigot at the base of the water tower. Turn the faucet on and water gushes out. Well then, let's get... We got some bottles! Oh, I have to do that to get points. You fill one of the empty beer bottles with water from the water tower. You turn the faucet off. We gotta drink the water. You take a swig of the water from the water tower. Uh oh. Your stomach starts to make a strange sounds. Your small intestine begins to whine. Your lower in intestine starts complaining loudly. Hey buddy, no cutting! It's people like you that give people like you a bad name! Oh, well, alright Mr. Fargus, sir. I was just leaving. I swear, give me one more minute. Perfectly okay, Billy. No need to get up. Just move over a little. Uh, well, I... Jeez, Mr. Farkas, invade my personal space, why don't you? Well then! A few moments later, you emerge feeling refreshed. Gee, that water's got a nasty kick to it. Now we'll be able to, uh, do what I did. Apparently, we had to drink it. In order to uh, get this right or whatever. So we get a beaker. Where's my bismuth? Where's my bismuth? Well, I can put five in here for now. Okay, so. Boop. Now where 
There's my bismuth. There's the 25. Pour it in. Put this away. Light the alcohol match. Now we got that boiled, so we put it in a bottle. Put it in a bottle. Carefully label the bottle by salicate anti-toxin bean. Congratulations, be careful, this stuff is mighty concentrated. Who wants to see another way to die? Cause this is another way we can die. Cause I'm crazy like that. I already saved it, what am I doing? It's highly concentrated. Swig it. Take a swig of the concentrated water purification solution. That'll clean your clock. So sorry to say that's how Freddy Park is done up and died. Taking medication he didn't need or the death of him, and it wasn't long afterwards that core school fell into the hands of, of old Darn I'm too choked up to tell you how it all ended. But I had to, to show this was the way you could die. And I gotta show another way you can die. Trust me. It's- it's totally worth it. You foolishly ingest several sacks of the baking soda, creating a major eruption of the worst kind. Okay, now we'll we'll play seriously now. As Siri says I can play this game. We leave. Mind the store, Srini. I'm off to uphold justice and stuff. Okie the dokie! I don't want to bother waiting for Penelope, so let's go. First... Oh! I need... I need that ladder back. I gotta get it back! I forgot to get it back! Hurry up, Freddy! Run faster! Okay. Oh, a few buzzards have landed here, waiting for some unfortunate life form to become Vulture Chow. Well, you might want to do something to those buzzards. They're simply living out their portion of the West ecology. Leave that poor owl alone, you vicious fiends. They ignore you completely. Hey, you! I'm waiting here, it's too dangerous out there! Apparently there's some adventurer out in the desert and the oil's waiting to annoy him in when he gets back. Cedric the Owl looks lost and out of place in the hot desert sun. If you listen close, you can almost hear him say, Freddy, if you're going to go in there, I am going to wait out here. He always has some flimsy excuse. Gee willikers, you can't quite reach that owl from here. How about here? Too bad, you'd like to wring his neck. <laughs> I forgot about that, so let's go back and... Well, Poor Cedric the Owl, he'll never delay another scene change. As much as you want to join in, leave the Cedric's leave Cedric's carcass for the buzzards. Farewell, Fed Cedric. We hardly knew ye. All right. Well, we got our ladder. Oh, shut up! I know. Up north we go. We gotta go back to the that water tower. 
Run! Okay. Now we can do this properly. We're gonna set... We're gonna set it up there. No! Put the ladder back! Climb the ladder, you... You fool. There we go. Then we reach down, grab it. Then we put the ladder here. Climb up. No, don't grab the ladder. Climb up the ladder. Well, let's save this as problem three. words of warning about never using the topmost rungs of a ladder, so you stop just short of the ladder top. Now... No, that's not... How does one make a lasso? I don't know how to make a lasso. Totally not looking up how to make a lasso. Totally not. Totally not. Totally not. <laughs> Why would I do that? <laughs> oh, you mean I have to go into the inventory in order? to do that, so I have to go, like, this score with a few quick movements. You make an authentic western, western lasso out of the rope. That's like falling off a log. Once you learn how, you never forget. And poof. Lasso it up. You snare the tower top. The crowd eats it up. Who's that schmuck with the rope? If you break your fool neck up there and die, don't come crying to us. Will you come by and entertain us every time we line up to go to the bathroom, sir? Well, time to climb up. When you reach the top of the water tower, the ch crowd cheers. Thank God, it's Freddy. We're number one. We're number one. What are you gonna do now, Freddy? I'm going to Larryland. Land. That hit a 9.0 on the free plug plugometer. Ah. Uh, now, now I just gotta exit out of that thing. Okay. Now we gotta pour in that medicine, and we've cured the poisoning. You carefully pour the purification solution into the town's water supply. Excellent job! For more than a few hours, the folks at Core School was feeling a whole lot, a heck of a lot better. Their mouths all settled down and happy. It wasn't until late that night, around about midnight, that trouble struck again. Freddy was sound asleep. Fire! Fire! Freddy Farkas, please come urgently! Huh? Uh, what's wrong, Srini? A Tredi's GD is becoming! The safe office is aflame! She is burning with a might most severe! The pharmacy may be next delighted! Get dressed as soon as possible! I am dressed. I don't have any pajamas. Take mine! No wait, there's no not time to perform such an effort. Just hurry and scheme in such a way as so as to extinguish the most threatening fire. <laughs> He's not gonna do anything. We gotta do it all. Well, outside we go. 
gotta fix the t fire tissue. Find the store. Well, well, let's tell the sheriff. The sheriff must be out. Where could he be? It's over 550 miles to the nearest Dunkin' Donuts. <laughs> oh my goodness. It's a fire. Save. Now let me show you... The old abandoned Massey office is ablaze, threatening to burn down not only itself and your pharmacy, but the whole town. Who wants to see a few more ways we can die? Okay, now we gotta go on the swing. Uh, are you stuck there, Freddy? Oh. <laughs> and then we fall into the swamp. <laughs> Oops. But that's how Freddy's brilliant career had done come to a screeching off. He sank into the swamp and was never seen again. Shame, too, because the rest of us were kind of planning on being in the sequel. That ain't one of my better stories, anywho. Say, did I ever tell you the story about old King Graham? It seemed there was this evil wizard, and then he got Graham into just a peck of trouble. <laughs> well, let's do this. Come on, you can move faster than that, Freddy. On to the swing. Go, go, go. Oops. <laughs> yep, Freddy fell down. Wink, boom. What a sad day. We found them all squished and not really living anymore. Of course, we had our own problems to deal with all of a sudden like that's when I'm about the town of court school seats to exist and we done known it. But that's another story, boys and girls. I gots to be alone with my thoughts for a while. Okay. Let's place them here. Onto the swing! Go, go, go! <laughs> oh. <laughs> there we go! We're up top! Now... <laughs> Oi, hi, meowix. I'm just showing different ways to die instead of actually playing the game seriously. <laughs> but we're gonna actually take care of the fire problem properly this time. We're gonna set the baking soda on this side instead. Yeah. That's how you know you did it correct when you hear the score! Okay. Let's get on that swing set. We gotta get on top of the schoolhouse. Quick! Test. I can see your... Okay, this is a better color. What? <laughs> oh, you're doing it on there, Twitch coat. Twitch color. That's why I got confused. Come on. On to... On to the swing. Oh, 
There we go. Now jump there. Oh yeah. Victory! What luck! What prowess! What a ridiculous solution! Still, you thought of it. You singly handedly quenched the flames of the Yasei office by using the seesaw as a catapult for the baking soda. Too bad nobody was here to see it. They'll never believe you in the morning. <laughs> yeah, that was a pretty ridiculous solution. Well, let's go back inside. You return! Yep. Yep. The fire's out, but I don't feel like sleeping. Yes, too much excitement for Freddy. He'll be overtired tomorrow morning. I hate it when that happens. Try to relax and reduce stress. Visit friends. It's midnight. What kind of friends can I visit this time of night? Indeed, that is a question you have asked. well asked. Well, still we should just attempt to fall asleep, I suppose. We'll never get back to sleep now. There's trouble afoot, and that gnaws at your gut. Or maybe it's that whole pouch of gummy buffalo you just had before you went to sleep. <laughs> Well, there's only one place we can go to, and that's the brothel. It's the only choice we've got left. Do, 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 do. Mm, now get. <laughs> well. That was a random event. We're gonna save this as... Fire problem solved. Ta-da! The boss is more than a little upset. Seems that our friend has been thwarting every plan so far. Yep, something's got to be done about it. Absolutely. Now let's get down to business. What is the best way to get rid of our little problem permanently? How about hanging? No, too quick and merciless. Poison? Nah, too unsure. Ancient Egyptian dagger? I got mine and find mine. You got yours handy? Not at the moment. Doesn't matter how we do it, as long as we do it soon. We don't want no proof it was us, neither. And nothing to connect it to the boss. Excellent thought. And the boss has arranged for a bit of muscle to come in, on in and make sure the entire town's cleaned out. We'll be rid of that do-gooder and all his flea-bitten friends in no time. They laugh cruelly, then sit back to reflect on their villainy. PH balance. The bank owner relaxing on the brothel porch with a good cigar. The thought of him conversing with one of Madame's nubile young professionals is enough to mix, make you swear off banking forever. It's Sheriff Chicken Pea Shift, sitting on the porch smoking cigars with the banker. While it's difficult to see the in this light, you are certain you can smell coal oil on him. The thought of him messing around with one of Madame's working girls makes you thankful that you don't participate in any disease trading activities. Sheriff, you know about the fire down at the SA office? The fire? No. You don't say. That's dreadful. Why, if and I'm not mistaken, a fire could wipe out most of Main Street, and say it'd take your pharmacy right up along with it. I hate to contemplate it. They snort and giggle like a couple of school children. Am I interrupting anything? Oh, er, why, of course not, Mr. Farkas. We were just talking about it. The sheriff surfed viciously, elbows Phineas in the ribs. Oof. A 
it is, we were simply chatting after an invigorating workout at the Bravo. Huh. Fortunately, I put the fire out. A bit of baking soda did the trick. You what? Put the fire out? What you going to do that for? Somebody could have gotten hurt. Surely you don't want me to leave the fire burning, did you? Shift and Phineas exchange glances. Well, of course not, Farkwell. You've done a good job there. We're pri right proud of you. Um, yes, Frederick. Very commendable. Well, don't have any choice to go in. And we gotta take this. The French postcards. Shock. Howdy, chastity. Howdy to you, you big ol' sloppy hunk of manly macho woman loving man. Laying on a little thick tonight, aren't we? Yeah, business is slow, but I gotta keep in practice. What? What's a sheep doing here? Bah. Translation. How much do you charge anyway? Bah bah. Translation. I'm a sheep at twice the price. Bah bah. <laughs> Sounds like a deal. Bah. Yes, it costs next to mutton. Ah, uh, the puns. Howdy, Miss Virtue. You sure are a vision of loveliness. Thank you ever so much, Freddy. And you, sir, are a studying buff. What does that mean? Just that you're the manliest prescription filling man I ever did see. Thank you. And there's one more girl here. Let's talk. Evening, Purity. Evening, Freddy. Has Madame still got you under lock and key, or are you gonna let us get a hold of you one of these days? I'm afraid I'm all hers for the time being. Well, if you ever change your mind, honey, you know where to find us. And when, and how often, and for how much. This handsome silver tea set on the coffee table. It stands out since it's just about the only thing in this room that isn't plush red velvet. It's a plush red velvet loveseat. A couple of plush red velvet chairs have been strategically placed in the room so to offer customers the girls' best profiles. Why, it's a lovely painting of Fred and Ginger. You know, Fred Mertz and Ginger Grant, the new hot new, hot new vaudeville team. A splendid chandelier hangs in the center of the room. How do they light that thing anyway? A charming picture window looks out the side of this house. The view's a little blurry, though, owing to all the slobber on the outside of the window. Ah! A variety of plush red velvet that in green glass lamps can be found here. Madame set out some wine and glasses. A few drinks help the customers loosen up. The girls are already loosen up. Wait a minute, the customers drink the wine and get tie in the girls are- Oh, never mind! No wine for you, Freddy Farkas. You need to maintain a clear, unmuddled head in order to uphold crime and defeat justice. Wait, something like that. <laughs> Pendulum clock swings constantly, as so do Madame's girls. Well, we just gotta wait here. There's no reason to move the coffee table. You prefer sarsaparilla, thank you very much. In a cracked, dirty bottle. Up, oh, event. Here comes Sadie Overy, Madame Overy. Hey, big boy, it's about time you showed up. Shall we take that pharmacy bill out in trade? Sure. Then get over here before I have to come get you, sweetie. My goodness. Freddy, I, I think you should leave. You mean just because I'm using you for cheap, tawdry pleasure and my heart really belongs to Penelope Prim, the gorgeous, young, and obviously more virtuous school marm? What? Who? <laughs> oh, nothing. Never mind. What were you saying? Oh, I was just saying, I think you should leave. That is, leave town. There's... Oh my, there's no good way to say this. The girls have said that the sheriff and the banker talk in their sleep. They hate you, Freddy. They want you dead. They're out to get you. 
It was something about you foiling the plan and how they had to get you out of the way. You gotta run, Freddy. You gotta get out of town by sundown. Now oh, don't you worry, Sadie. I've been doing a pretty good job up till now using just my wits and pharmacological knowledge, haven't I? I'm not I'm just gonna turn tail and run and leave you and Penelope and Corsco behind me to fend for yourselves. You're not listening to me, Freddy Farkas. There's a man coming. Men with guns. Big guns. Guns with long barrels. Long, hard barrels. Long, hard, steery, steely barrels and low slung holsters and, and... Sadie, snap out of it. All the euphemisms I could make there. Oh, sorry. I was just visualizing. Anyways, you're not going to be able to outthink your way out of some men with guns. If you're set on staying in town, you'll have to... You know, take up gunslinging again. That's out of the question. I left that all behind me years ago. I'm just not that kind of boy anymore, and I don't want to discuss it. Stop it. You've got a choice, and that's all there is to it. Either leave town and save your hide, or you pull yourself together and face reality. Quit your talking about potions and liniments. You're not going to stop bullet. No bullets. It's time to get off of your cute little butt and give these t men a taste of frontier justice. Now what are you gonna do? Hi, Adam. I don't know. I don't know. How you doing, Adam? Hold me, Sadie. Press me to your ample bosom and let me decide tomorrow. Okay. What did- you came into the brothel scene, basically. That's all I can say. And now we're in Act 3. So basically what we did was we saved a real Indian, as in from India. Saved the town from diarrhea problems, poisoned water. Oh, that's right. Madame Overy begged and pleaded with Freddy to either leave town or take up his old gun slinging ways, something which Freddy was just a mite reluctant to consider. <sighs> Lots of words. Come on. I don't want to click because I might skip something. So they decided to sleep on it, and though they didn't get much sleep, Freddy did mull it over somewhat. <laughs> Next morning, he decided to <coughs> we save the town from poison water. Please, Chris, 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 Maybe I better. <coughs> Maybe I better wait. <laughs> Someone poisoned the water supply. Never mind, just go on. <laughs> Rooster, so we see, and then there was a fire at midnight. Penelope, Corsco, Madame Overy. I know I've got to get out of this town before they can gun me down, but I can't. Corsco's my home, and darn it to heck, I'm not gonna let some cheap criminals run me out of my home. Somebody poisoned the water hole. Yes, and we're a pharmacist, so we cured the poison. Sadie's right. I've got to be the man I once was. I've got to dredge up my ugly past, meet it square in the face, stare down, pick it up, dust it off, fluff it up, and put it on again. <laughs> now, anyways, Act Three, start. We gotta. This act is in time, so we've got some time to relax. So let's see. We saved an actual Indian from India. And he joined- he is now our pharmacy assistant. We fixed the poison water. And in the middle of the night, a fire lit up in town. Sweet. But w but we fixed the fire by using a seesaw as a catapult to launch some baking soda into the fire, which put the fire out. Because... Chemistry! And then, because of all that excitement, we couldn't go back to sleep, so we went to uh, the brothel. And Sadie told us that... Uh, no, wait. We overheard that the banker and the sheriff are trying to get rid of the town, and they plan to kill us. So then we went into the brothel, and Sadie's like, You gotta get out of here, Freddy Farkas! There's men coming with guns! <laughs> that voice. So yes, we did a lot.
Oh yes, yeah, the desktop's locked. Damn, this crude desktop interface. I can see different. <laughs> All right, let's get our key. Not. Good job. Clink. Say Freddy Freaker because I keep thinking you're gonna say Freddy Freaker. Clunk. I bet there's a clonk. Clank. Tap, tap, tap. Well, let's, uh, you unlock the desktop. Drawer is locked. Is it now? Why, it's your old ghoul. What happened to that roll you recently left on top of it? You must have eaten it! Fred a freaker! It's an old letter, cobwebbed, yellowed, and faded. You take the letter out of the drawer. I think there's a way to get extra points from that. Like some sort of glitch. It's a letter you received some years back from your dearly departed friend, Phil Graves. Dear Freddy, thank you so kindly for your recent gracious hospitality during my recent convalescence. I forgot the score thing. I gotta read this again. But yes, score! And I think I might change <laughs> my uh, Streamlabs sounds to that. So if I get full, you hear score! Or someone hosts, you hear score! The floor of your workroom provided an extremely comfortable bed, and the stale pharmacy goods you gave me to eat helped stave off starvation quite adequately. I must admit to being a little curious by your request that I retain your safety deposit key for you, and I cannot m imagine what you have secured in the bank that creates such strong feelings of both revulsion and an endearment. However, I have done as you asked, and taken the key with me. I swear to you that I will never return this key to you, or even allow it within your sight, and I further swear to keep it on me wherever I may go. On this you have my word of honor, for I am ever your friend. Fill up the D graves. Fill up the graves. Ah! Wait a minute, what else? Do you Might as well save. Alrighty. Actually, some buxom lady's portrait. I love how the painting seems to follow you around the room. And I don't mean her eyes. Oh. Ah, fill up the graves! Ah, well, we got a claim check. I think I know where we might use that, but we need to get that deposit key, and... Philip's been buried in this town. It's your faithful Indian companion. Companion Serini, hard at work at getting the store ready for its grand reopening someday soon, you hope. Mind the store, Serini. I'm off to uphold justice and stuff. Okie the dokie! I just like that. Okie the dokie! Nope. Hey, Max. Max ignores you, but he seems to flinch a bit. Perhaps he thinks you're in on yet another nasty prank. I just noticed. Is that a soda bar? Right in the pharmacy? Yes. That's Gluteus Maximilian and his horse, who appears to be wearing one of those hilarious whoopee saddles. They call him Gluteus because he's the butt of every practical joke in town. Aw, man. <laughs> well, might as well take the horse. Score. Plop. You bravely, stupidly grab the steaming from fly-laden horse plop. Fortunately, it seems to be holding together well as you place it in your pocket. Cool, I could use a soda when I get my medicine. Oh, more farting horses. Well, he, it, he sat on a whoopee saddle, so... And guess how we're gonna die again! I thought the problem was solved. That was a whoopee saddle! A prank saddle! So when someone sits on it... You know what a whoopee cushion is, right? 
Who wants to see another way to die? <laughs> you better guess what it is. I'm waiting! Are we gonna die via poop? Yep! How disgusting! And that's how Freddy met his ironic old death from ingesting horsey products that was never meant to be ingested. A few days later, all the coarse gold bought, got bought up by some mysterious East Coast consortium and rest as they spawn the same as history. Caution! The Surgeon General has determined that you've gotten exactly what you deserve. Eating horse dung? This game likes to punish you. <laughs> At least humorously. Now, I picked up some uh, French postcards while uh, <laughs> at the brothel. Now, what's Ohanahan doing? Hey, I put out a fire last night and saved the town. Proud of me? Of course I'm a proud of you. Salvatore Ohanahan is taking a moment to sing a few bars from The Barber of Seville. Geeps. <laughs> well, let's give him the uh, postcards. We don't need them. You hand Salvatore the French postcards. Your customers may not be able to read Salvatore, but I bet they would enjoy looking at pictures. No, they're not interested in- Wait a minute! What in the hell are those girls are doing? What is this game reading again? Probably teen? I'm not sure, but I don't think it's legal on this side of the Sierra Nevada. Well, now your exceptional generosity's gonna be, gotta be reciprocated. Could we, I be interested in you in a free shave? No, thank you, Sal. And how about a free wisdom tooth extraction? Oh, well, mine are already out. Had them pulled in the dental department while I was in college. Needed the extra money for tuition. Well, then let me see. He carefully, he studies his barbershop's interior carefully. Hey, that's a got it. Take a this. A bottle of that new fangle nitrous oxide I got in a far as well go wagon last a week. Ain't none of old skies around here want to be the first man to sissy to stand up to the forceps of for a little old tooth pulling. Well, this was before the ESRB, yeah. Why, thank you, Salvatore. Perhaps I can use this in some of my experiments. And we've got laughing gas. That's what nitrous oxide is. Oh, well, might as well talk to everyone. Sam, I'm gonna be going away for a while. Okay, we'll forward your mail. Aren't you going to ask why I'm leaving? What for? You're going to tell me anyway. I'm a marked man. Sheriff Schiff, PH Balance, and somebody called the boss are out to get me, so I'm skipping town. Smart move. Give my regrets, my regards to Broadway. To what? Never mind. Good luck to you. Doc! What's that? What? I just want you to know I'll be leaving town soon. Once I do, Strainy's gonna be in charge of the pharmacy. I've deputized him to fill the prescriptions. Okay? Doc? He fell asleep. Damn, he's falling asleep with his eyes open again. I guess we should... That guy's got a neat hat. I guess we should tell Helen back. Mom, there was fire last night that almost burned the whole town down. Don't you think I saw that for myself on the way to this work this morning? Honestly. Fortunately, I was able to put the fire out with a little baking soda. So that's the stench I've been smelling. What an inconsiderate clog you can be. That burnt bacon soda smell is simply nauseating. It's no wonder I've got no customers today. I thought I was doing the town a favor. Well, next time, think a little harder. She is so ungrateful. Say, Hop, hear about the big fire last night? Oh, yes. Very dramatic. I came to the rescue, though. Put the fire out single-handedly. Oh, very good. We all proud of you. Beemok? I don't know what that means. Beemok? Big mints of coarse gold? 
Ooh, there's a pie there. How tempting. Fresh apple pie. Still warm from mom's oven. What could be more American? I was like, what? Pie! Oh, I hear the song. You know what we gotta do? It's time. And while we were at the brothel, there turned out to be a sheep hooker. Yes! A sheep hooker. Freddy's a furry confirmed! Sheep! <laughs> sheep off! Sheep off! It's Barbara Mandrill and the Bobettes. Oops. Don't touch them, you'll th throw off their timing. Besides, the lanolin will make your hands soft and squishy like a girl's. Okay. <laughs> Barbara. No, that's not what I meant. But whatever. Dog. <laughs> okay, well, there's a grave. We gotta f dig up Philip's grave. Because he's got our key. He took it Score. with glancing furtively around to see if Doug's within sight. You grab his shovel. I'll save this as Act 3B, I guess. Dig him up. More. We gotta dig it up. Score. You start to dig up the freshly laid grave. Muscles that haven't been used in years begin to groan and whine. But with gritty determination of a professional grave robber, you toil on. And on. And on. It's an open grave. Even a world-weary seen it all pharmacist like yourself, one who deals with cold sores, headaches, and diarrhea on a daily basis, still can't shake that uneasy feeling one gets when standing close to death. My muscles grow and lighten all the time. I hear ya. We gotta jump in. You carefully search through the many pockets of Graves' $3 suit until you discover the safe deposit key box key you entrusted to Phil so many years ago. In a touching display of emotion, and a little hidden desire to carry a little or less around you, you fold up Philip's letter and place it under his folded hands. Now he's a correspondence corpse. Well, let's, uh, fill it back up. You begin the arduous task of replacing the heaping mount of dirt, one shovel at a time, over and over. Can we put the shovel back? No, that's not what I meant! How do you put the shovel back? I don't need the shovel! We still have the horse dung, I just noticed. You'll see what it's used for. Hey, let's try to grab that apple pie. You slyly attempt to swipe the apple pie from under Hop Sing's nose. Nice try, Freddy Farkas. You want me to remove your hands with Gingfu knife? I'm happy to accommodate. On second thought, maybe that wasn't such a good idea right now. <laughs> this game looks similar to King's Quest. It's by the same people. Welcome, the Nav Navigator 25? 
It's made by the same people. Al Lowe is a pretty funny guy. Well, let's go to the bank. Actually, I forgot. We need to talk to the sheriff. To the sheriff! Uh -oh. Pie! Here we go. No, that's not the sheriff's. Yep. I pretty much memorized what to do. Except a few things I might forget. Sheriff, I'm going to be saying my goodbye soon, and I just wanted to thank you for all your help. Don't mention it, boy. If and I can do anything to make your departure more hasty or pleasant, feel free to ask. Okay. So he's what PP's pee Playhouse? It's a boot. Yep, that's what it's supposed to be. Well. Parody of Pee Wee's Playhouse. Help yourself. I'll be right out. He never is out. Hey, Willie. Leave me alone. I'm crabby. So, what else is new? Listen, I'm gonna be leaving town for a while. Yeah, right. No, I am. You're not. You're gonna practice your gunslinging, and then you're gonna dredge up that mucky old past of yours and go back to being a big shot hero. How do you know? Hey, half the Western heroes in America done the same thing. Good luck to you. Now see. Now you see in the dime novels. Now get a move on. Imagine the show was called PP's Playhouse. <laughs> My goodness. I definitely need to change the sound to officially be a score whenever I get a follower <laughs> or a host. I wish I could see the vid although I'm on LTE. Ah. Let's talk to the banker. Sorry, but it must be too bad. No. No, we're not gonna do it. If we click this, we lose. Well, might as well save again. Now we need a safe deposit key. Score! You hand the safe deposit key to the pH balance. It'll be ready Tuesday. Oh, I mean, allow me to fetch your safe deposit box for you immediately. Then he opens the vault. And he gets the safe deposit box out. There's our guns. Our pistols. You lovingly lift your pistols from the box where they've spent the past decade. Score. You take your lucky neckerchief out of the safe deposit box. Now you're really beginning to feel lucky. Wait a minute, the last time you wore this? That was when Kenny shot off your ear in St. Louis. Well, maybe it's not that lucky a neckerchief. Exit. I'm all done now. But bum. Ooh, weaponry, pretty much. Thank you for using the bank of Bob. Yes, because you must sound very professional. Now let's go to Mom's cafe. I love you kids. Shoot him in the vault. You can't. I don't think you can. Ooh, coffee! Mom offers free coffee to her regular customers. You're as regular as anyone. 11 a.m. every morning, you head straight for the outhouse. So, as usual, you pour yourself a steaming hot cup of joe. Now... Kathy. Yep, free cup of Kathy. Let's give this to the sheriff because sheriffs like coffee, right? Cops like coffee. Say, Sheriff, 
I know how much a law enforcement person like you enjoys a good hot cup of coffee every now and then. Score. Thanks, partner. But you know what? Something sweet would sure taste good right now. Why, I bet that's true. I'll be glad to try and find you something to munch on. But in the meantime, I've been thinking about moving to another city, but I've got no bullets. I was wondering if you have any bullets that would fit an old 45. Way well, sure, boy. Soon. Here. Have a box of, the, of these Remingtons. No charge. They're on the county. Thank you, Sheriff. I know. Give him the tongue and tell him it's chocolate. We gotta give him the pie. And we gotta get... I'm pretty sure you would know what it is. So let's go in. Damn flies! This place is like a stable! Gotta get him the pie! Uh... I totally didn't do that on purpose! Look at what you've done! Friday Farkas, I'll see you run out of town for this! Hop sing, hop to it, and get out here, and clean up this mess, and thank you for the follow! Uh... It's probably gonna show up, I bet! The Navigator, thank you for following! Oh, you and Big Wanna Know! And thing, yes! The follow and the hosting, I, I think. New follower hype! Woo! Now, if I just stream consistently and get a few more followers watching. People watching in general, made by Sierra. Yes, I plan to finish this game tonight. Or just uh, good move, Freddy. Dropping one steamy hot pie to get another. I can finish this quickly, I think. The sheep are back. The sheep are back. 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 Alrighty. Sheep! Now we got the pie. We're gonna give it to the sheriff. It may not be a donut, but it's something sweet. And, you know, sh sheriff likes sweet things, as he said. Here we go, Sheriff Shift. I found some of Mom's nice hot apple pie for you. I know how much a law enforcement person like you enjoys sweet, fat, fatty breakfast. Why, well, thank you! I've been so hungry I could eat a bear. This'll sure go good with that cup of coffee you brought me earlier. You found it. <laughs> yep. Uh, Sheriff, do you have anything I could use to clean these old guns of mine before I leave town? They're mighty dirty and I want to be prepared for my long journey. Okay, son, but this gun cleaning kit will be the last thing I give you. Now get your guns clean, get your horse packed, and get your ass out of my town. Alright. We'll do that. Now we gotta clean our guns. Huh. Srini's not here at the moment. Alright. Well, I'm gonna save again. And I'm probably gonna have to get a drink soon. I'm getting thirsty. Well, let's just clean the guns first, and I can show you a, a different way of dying. So this is... Cleaning kit. Take that. Is that on the guns? With the sheriff's cleaning kit, you lovingly clean and polish your old pistols till they're like new. You remove a fair amount of rust from the barrel. A damn good thing, or you might have had a disaster on your hands. We're gonna shoot ourselves. Do you want to see that? Because I can show you what happens. It's a different death. Completely different. You slip the bullets into the chamber. All the old memories come rushing back to you. You were the ones about you and your fresh cousin under the day bed. Back when you were a curious eight year old. What? 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 Saving. This is a completely different and unique death. Oops, 
You tried something in really incredibly stupid! Ta-da! And with that, I'm gonna quickly get a drink. I wanna get some of that chocolate milk. Got my milk, I am back. Oh yeah, let's go. And I got myself my chocolate milk. Now, hey, we come back at the same time. Hey. Now let's get this open again. I wonder if it shows a different message. Yeah! And I said it was gonna sing the prologue sometime, so we're gonna do it now. Here we go. 
He was born in old St. Louis by the age of four. Dad knew he was the best little crack shot the West had ever seen. By the time he reached pubescence, he could outshoot all the adolescents west of Durango in north of Abilene. Farkas, Freddy Farkas. You can sing along easily. Famous gunslinging deputy, Freddy Farkas, Freddy Farkas. Frontier hero to me. <laughs> this voice I'm doing is ridiculous. Now though one day young Freddy Farkas stared at eyes as black and dark as not the eyes of an outlaw. Well known throughout the West Well the cuff kid's name was Kenny And he outdrew Freddy Farkas When he shot Freddy's ear off To prove who was the best Now our hero Freddy Farkas With wounded pride and nearless carcass Vowed to the heavens To give up gunnery He'd be better off he reckoned with the life on green that always beckoned pestles, not pistols, in pharmacology. Farkas, Freddy Farkas. Highest score on his SAT. Freddy Farkas, Freddy Farkas. Five year college degree. <laughs> I can't keep doing this voice, but I gotta do it. I gotta. Have a friend matriculated, got his PhD and graduated, moved out to core school and bought a pharmacy. He's a real prescription writer, and they don't know he's an ex gunfighter. Locked up his memories, repressed them totally. But his peaceful new survival was shot to hell upon arrival of course called Schoolmar, the sweet Penelope. She has captured Fred's affection, but he's scared he'll get a huge rejection. Can't bear to tell her just what he used to be. Bark is Freddy Bark is. Frontier pharmacist bourgeoisie, Freddy Farkas, Freddy Farkas, peerless, zeroless, and free. And then it goes to Act One, which we don't need. And I definitely was uh, <laughs> imitating the way Al Lo sung it in the uh, uh, CD-ROM version. And that was the song, yes! That was the full song. I am so tempted to see if it shows other things. <laughs> but I don't think I should. I hope I get all the points. How many points do I have? 761! What? We got the letter again! wonder if they'll remake this and it actually has a voice. They had a CD-ROM re- Uh... Not really remake, but it's where they added in voices. Like, voice acting to everything. And changed the music to be MIDI. We just got a letter that we had put in the grave with Phil Lufty Graves. We got, just found a glitch and got an extra point as a result. Now we can get a thousand out of 999 points. Now we've got a claim check. We better use it. And the cat cup is back.
Show them the kill aim, check Giddy Cup. Yep. And then our costume will just be about done. So, you still have that pair of boots I dropped off for a shine? I know it's been about six years now, but I just remembered I left them here. Hmm, let me see. What's the number on this crime magic? He searches under the counter. I got a jug juice right here. Juice! Yep, they're still here. They'll be ready next Tuesday. Never mind. I'll just take them as is. Hey, don't worry about the storage charges, okay? And we got our boots! Now we gotta head up north. I think we're gonna be doing some gun practice. There's Srini! Our faithful, loyal Indian companion. Who's actually from India. Let's uh, set up the bottles. Go ahead. Make our day. I had too much tequila last night. Go easy. Yep. But anyways, I'm gonna do it easy because I don't think uh, any uh, it affects the score whatsoever. Okie the dokie, Freddy Farkas. First we shall see if you can successfully strike the bottles from afar with the bullets of your pistol. Then I will toss the bottles up in the air and you may try to hit them in flight. Go ahead and may the best man win. Ah, it's a bit jittery. Score! Score! But now our hand has settled down somewhat. Where is he gonna throw him? Oh yeah, got it! Got it! Totally awesome! I got it! Score! Score! Very good, Freddy Farkas. Now let us try some quick drawing. Just make sure you hit the target, and not me! <laughs> I'm applauding inside myself! Now for the big challenge of all! Six bottles at once! And I didn't do anything there. Oh yeah! Say, Freddy Farkas, you're not so bad after all at this shooting gig. Ah, uh, thanks, Srini. My life and the lives of every man, woman, and ruminant in this town depend on me being quick with a gun. Yeah. Cool <laughs> <Whole> thing. <laughs> Did you not mention earlier that your life is in dangerous, most forthcoming? Damn, it didn't show up. Oh well, it showed up in, uh, it sort of, I guess. Might then I suggest that you might be excellent to be placing a disguise upon your person, thereby making it to appearances that Freddy Farkas has no longer uh, around in this locality? Good thinking, Srini. I need a disguise of some sort. Something that will strike terror into the hearts of the bad guys. I know, a bat! I'll disguise myself as a bat, and you can be Srini, the boy wonder. Have you got any leotards? <laughs> Pardon me for asserting, but this bat thing is really hokey. You're right, too juvenile. Let's see, how about... Might I suggest a skin-tight costume with flowing cape, and placed upon the manly chest there of a large F for Farkas? No, that never worked. I don't want people to know I'm Freddy, remember? Bat Farkas! And perhaps you are needing to do something about that right ear, or rather, the lack of that right ear. Dang it, you're right. Everyone knows me as the one-eared pharmacist. I need to make a new one somehow, maybe forge one out of metal or something. I'd like to give it some thought and meet you back at the pharmacy once I've completed my disguise. Na 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 But if we go over here, there's Hopsing. Oh, looks like Hopsing is headed out of town along with his student. 
Why Ching of Grasshopper? Hey, Hop! Freddy! Hey, take care, man. I'm out of here. But why? Well, Mom's closed, and I hear the streets of San Francisco are paved with snails. Ah! <laughs> so I'm gonna take my unique blend of culinary expertise specializing in tradition American frontier fare, executive Near Eastern blend of herbs, spices, and quaint rustic Chinese movie dialect, and open a restaurant with my old partner, Dop Dance. Oh no, sing and dance, together again. Well, take care, Hop. Good luck to you. Same to you, Freddy. Welp, he's gone. Ah. Well, we better get back. Bye, Hop. Better hop away. There's a duck! Contemplating duck dinner, Freddy. Talking to ducks? Desperate for company? Quack. <laughs> Quack. Duck Gillespie. It's the duck version of the drunk doctor. Duck! We gotta poke the duck. Alrighty. Now we gotta do something about... You return! Ah, oh, that's new. That thing's new. Yep. You carefully take the medallion off the wall thinking, Srini will never miss it. Freddy Farkas, what an entirely unsatisfactory afterlife are you doing with my finely earned silver medallion? I saw some ducks a few days ago. I saw a lot at the pond uh, in Idaho. It's going to a good cause, Srini. It's gonna help make Core School a safer, saner place to live. I am hoping so, Freddy, for all the sakes. Now... We gotta do something. With this silver, but... I need to talk to Chesterfield, the guy, Whitlin Willie. Hiya, Whitlin Willie. How's the gunsling go? Great, I'm getting ready to leave town now. Got the leaving town bit, Sonny. I know what you're up to. This is my story, remember? Oh, yeah. Now finish putting that disguise together and get to it so we can get this town cleaned up once and for all. Hey, you don't have to tell me twice. How do I make a disguise? I've got wax. Let's show him the medallion, because he's the one telling the story, yep. Score. Willie, I'm in need of a way to disguise my ear. Do you think you could do something creative with this? Something in the shape of an ear, perhaps? Offhand, I'd say do it dang yourself. My nap time's coming up shortly. I've had a hard day at Whitland, but you could maybe do some lost ca wax casting. Would this sucker do the trick? Lost what? Lost wax casting, son. What do you do? Sleep your way through metal shot? I guess I must have. What's lost wax casting? That's casting with an apostrophe, son, and not an e. Anywho, you can make all sorts of things by making a wax positive using clay to mold, make a mold, then melting down the metal and pouring it into a mold. To make a mold, you carves whatever you're gonna cast out of wax. That's what you call a positive. Once you take the wax positive, you take some clay, see? And you pack the clay around, all around the positive. You leave a little hole at top so you can get the wax out. So now you got your wax inside the clay. Well, you just heat that sucker up until the wax goes all oozy and you pour the wax out. That's the wax lost wax part, see? Now you got your empty clay mold, what you call a negative. You smelt down your metal and pour the metal into the negative. Once it hardens up, you can just scrape off the metal. Scrape off the clay and there you are. Offline. Just get all that. Oh dear. Oh dear. Oh dear. Come on. Come on. You can do it. Why'd you cut out on me? Come on. I believe in you! Ah, we were talking to Witten and Willie. I already told you, if we make for some fine lost wax casting. 
He told us to make to do some metal casting. Basically. We melt this down, got we need some clay though. Okay. Well, we gotta get some clay now. I mean, what happened with the offline thing? I don't know, it just went boop! It just... Went off. Score. Grab a handful of clay from the pile beside the grave. Well, you never know, it could come in handy. Oh, you bet! Now we need to get back to our pharmacy. And make what I believe is the final part of our uh, disguise. Let me see. We've got our boots. That part of the outfit. Our neckerchief. And now we need that golden ear. I... Not the golden ear, silver ear. I can't words. Back here we go. Have we used that dung yet? Just wondering. Yeah, we did. We placed it in Mom's cafe, remember? And then we stole the pie. <laughs> Alright. Item-wise, we need... Uh... Wait a minute. Let's go back. Oh. <laughs> we need to go back, and what I need to do is use this on my ear. Just like you've seen it done at the spas, you apply the clay to your face for a few moments and scrape it off. Now your complexion is as soft and smooth as the newborn hog's butt. That's not what I was trying to do! I'm trying to get it on my ear, dang it! I guess I do it here? How would I get it? Well, let's, uh, turn the alcohol lamp on. Let's, uh, get the wax. Okay, beaker. I guess we put it in the beaker. Well, I don't think it would be the crucible. Why bother? I'm trying to shape the clay, but you're no sculptor. Maybe you should take up whittling instead. Ah! Uh, close! So close! What do I do now? I have to melt the wax somehow. But I don't know how to melt... The wax! How do I melt wax? What do you mean I don't put it in the beaker? That makes sense to me! Melting pure or almost pure metals. Melt it in the test tube? Uh, hang on, well, it did tell me where to put the, uh, silver. There is the silver medallion there. Now we need to somehow melt this wax. I need to melt the wax! Okay. Do I put it in the test tube? That doesn't work like that. Well, we'll screw you. Graduated cylinder? Nope, 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 nope. D am I really gonna need to have to look this up? Oh my goodness. This ear. How do you make the ear? Because I know what I gotta do, but I don't know what to, what to do in order to do what I've gotta do. 
Oh, we. I don't know, girl. Oh, we gotta go back to the store. I didn't leave the fire. Okay, the fire automatically goes out. Whatever. I need a pocket knife. Okie the dokie. Excuse me. He's gone. Whitley Will is gone, so you're just gonna take his knife. And we're gonna take that pocket knife. With your newly acquired skills, you whittle the candle wax into the shape of an ear. And one that should theoretically attach snugly to the small knot of cartilage that remains of your re of your original ear. Ew, where's the warning on the box that says, Warning, this game contains references to small knots of cartilage. Then string is that game over. No! I think it inadvertently gunked up that nut either good and proper with wax. You top it away, hoping Willie finds it sooner or later and thinks he stupidly dropped it. Wax ear. It's a handsomely carved wax ear, looking very much like the one Kenny the Kid shot off so many years ago. Now we pack clay around it. Carefully pack the clay in and around the wax ear, leaving some of it open that you can pour the wax out later. There we go. Wax-filled mold. It's a mold made of packing clay around the wax positive of an ear. Now we can do it! You return! Yep. I wonder what the speedrun world record for this game is. I don't know. I definitely don't have it, but I am doing it somewhat fast. Well, fast for me, since I, I remember most of the stuff I needed to do. Take the matches. There we go. The wax in the mold slowly starts to melt. The melted wax runs out of the mold and splatters on the work table, resulting in... An empty ear-shaped mold! Hot doggy! And a waxy tabletop, but that's not important right now. Okay, now let's get the silver medallion. And we get the crucible. And we've... The silver medallion slowly begins to melt. Aw, oh, there is none. Aw, oh, man! You now have a crucible containing molten silver. Done according to speedrun.com. Okay. Now we've got the metal. You quickly pour the molten silver into the empty mold. Okay. Now what do we do? Da 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 da. Score. You scrape the clay off and discard it, leaving you with a gleaming silver ear. Beautifully done. With an ear like this, you could, dare I say it, RULE THE WORLD! <laughs> now, I think we got our disguise all together. Ah, the silver ear is the perfect accessory for that neckerchief. Yes! It's the perfect thing to go with your cowboy outfit! Lee Marvin would be so jealous! Wow, he's not just a pharmacist, pharmacist but he also knows how to accessorize! That would make a mighty ugly boutonniere. Alright, we got everything ready. I believe so. Maybe we need a hat, but I don't know. Don't shout from Serene. That's Serene from. I think I'm ready to get dressed. We ready? We don't know that it's Kenny yet. Very good then. You start to dress, and I will assist to you in the shortest in shortest order. Let's put on the outfit. Score. With your boots, your clothes, your guns cleaned and loaded, your silver ear, and your lucky neckerchief, you're ready to get dressed and assume your identity as the gunslinging stranger. You return to your penthouse suite. High atop the glittering Farkas Pharmacy in beautiful downtown Coarse Gold. 
There Srini greets you and solemnly assists you in the final preening. It's a somber, yet somehow exciting event. <laughs> there you are, Freddy Parkus. You are mostly indeed a picture of stately, mysterious strangeness. Nobody will be positive to recognize you any now. Thanks for your help, Srini. Poor school owes you a debt of gratitude it can never repay. If anyone asks, Freddy Farkas has left town. And if I don't come out of this alive, the pharmacy is yours. That is a true gener is of a true generous nature you are displaying, Freddy Farkas. As for me, I would like to open a pharmacy on the reservation among my people. But whether that is fated to be or not is in the hands of someone who is not I. Luck be with you, Freddy Farkas. I am proud now. We got this! <laughs> Showdown at the Hallelujah Corral. This is the final act. Oh gosh, the mercantile's closed now. Stage was set for Freddy's showdown. Wait, did I say slowdown? I meant showdown. I read it as sh showdown. Act four, final act? No, I did say showdown, didn't I? I thought I did, I weren't sure. <laughs> Anywho, now that Freddy was wearing his silver ear thing and his old gunslinging duds, nobody except Srini recognized him. Not even Sadie Overy or Penelope knew who he was. They saw, thought Freddy had skipped town. And they thought this new guy was just a handsome silver ear stranger who happened to be especially up on his pharmacology. Now Freddy didn't have a lot of time to lose because things in core school was getting worser and worser. Now this is going to be a pretty short one because I know exactly what to do. What's going on here? Hoping Chester won't recognize you with your new disguise, you approach him with a friendly smile. <laughs> Say, partner, that's a woeful little sign you're carrying there. Will polish ears for a stagecoach fair? What's the problem? Why so down on your luck? Well, I'll tell you, even though I don't usually talk to silver disguised strangers, there's a man inside who's the best gold and cheat poker cheat I've ever seen. I never even knew he was stealing my store until it was all over. I mean, his face is out in the back. You, you see, I bet everything I own, including my store on a queen high straight flush. And that son of a gun was holding a king high. Don't feel bad, fella. I would have probably done the same. By the way, did you get this gambler's name? Name? Sure did. Wheaton All is his name, but everyone calls him Aces, and I can see why. Thanks for your time, and I hope things work out for you. I think I must just pay Mr. Aces a little call. Good luck to you, stranger. If you're gonna get into that game, thanks. I'm wearing my lucky neckerchief, so I'm not too worried. Shh, he yeah, alright. <laughs> My goodness. So we got the poker cheat there. Let's talk to the barber. Sam, what the devil is going on here? Do I know you? How could you let this, this scoundrel swindle people out of their homes and life savings? And you are? I'm f wait a minute, no, never mind, you don't know me. Forks at Coast Guard are losing their shirts to this lion thieving, cheating, low down, no good, scum sucking drifter. Please, sir, don't talk that way about the saloon's new owner. Whoa! Freddy Farkas for Poker Night 3. <laughs> I just work here now. If you have any complaints or suggestions, feel free to put them in writing and I'll be happy to pass them along to the new management. Now, anyone know what else uh, Sierra made? Specifically, Aloe? He made the Leisure Suit Larry games. And who we have right here is his ancestor. It's Zircon Jim Laffer. Years from now, his brother Ezekiel will sire son, will beget Ethan, will beget Bartholomew, who will beget Lawrence. That's right, it's Larry's great great grand uncle. Or something like that. And. Oh my gosh, this impersonation will be so bad if I do it. But let's talk to Doc. Don't bother him, he's slipping it off. Then when he wakes up, he'll have a hair of the dog that bit him, and the cycle will begin anew. Like the miracle of the night is of life itself. Howdy, stranger. New in town? Hi, sure I am. I'm looking for a hot time. I've 
having known since some of your fine horoscope fillies, and I wouldn't mind an introduction. Perhaps you could put in a good word for me with them. <laughs> of course, I know you wanna. You guys gotta pay for your fun, but I figure yeah, with my looks, and, okay? You should be paying me, you know, right? Right? By the way, my name's Lamper. <laughs> Sir Found Jim Lamp. Don't believe I got yours. Whoops, I think I smell something burning or something. Catch you later. Whew, what rock did he crawl out from under? Now we gotta see what's going on here. Let's save. We're gonna save. Oh, too many saved games, so. Let's replace this as Act 4 Start. <laughs> I felt so weird doing that impersonation. Muff Potter. Nice to see him and Joe getting along again. He owns, or at least he did own, until he started playing, a huge tract of land along the south side of town where Chinatown used to be. Whoa, you saw that, right guys? That's Joe, the guy that had a bad time with old Muff Potter a few years back. He owns a local tourist trap. And we do mean trap. He trapped a few, a couple punks in there a few years back. Tom and Be Becky somebody or other. Ah, it's a Tom Sawyer reference. They almost didn't get out. Somebody ought to write a, write a book about it. That's old Ollie Oxen Free, up close and personal. He's the guy who owns the fig farms on the northern side of Collier Bluff. He's the worst gambler in town. He'll lose the entire four, fourth no, North 40 in no time. <laughs> who knows? Gambling way is Keg and Barrel Shop is Cooper Coop Cooper. He and his wife, his children, and his parents all work in the shop. He's a Cooper, she's a Cooper, they're all Coopers. Wouldn't you like to be a Cooper too? <laughs> Scoot along, silver boy, before I deal you the dead man's hand. We're gambling the tour center away? Say it in so, Joe. Joe grunts. That's the most you've ever heard him say. Ollie, listen to me. Don't do it. It's not worth it. Don't waste your breath. Ollie needs what little concentration he has to hang on to his farm a few minutes more. Hey, Muff, don't play with this guy. He cheats. Muff nods his in agreement and keeps playing. Muff's never been too bright. <laughs> Cooper, please, you can't lose everything. You just can't. He doesn't speak, but his attitude is clearly, oh yeah, just watch me. <laughs> Ace is hold holding his cards tightly. One of his hands appears unusually stiff. Maybe he's nervous? We gotta catch his hand. I like this song, by the way. It appears to be a third hand, so that's how Aces is cheating. You're cheating! That's a fake left hand! Your real hand is hidden under the table! You've been feeding good cards into your hand and taking away the bad ones! Why, yes, Silver Earth Stranger, you're correct! Almost. As you see, I have no cards in my left hand. I only have this. Uh-oh. Now turn around, Silver Ear. I think I'd shoot you in the back so I don't have to see that ugly face of yours. Uh-oh. Now, uh... Now let's get our guns out. You cheated! I know what to shoot, but let's shoot some other things for fun. Be kind, please rewind. <laughs> you made a balloon noise. <laughs> if I try to shoot forward, I will die, so let's try one of these bottles. We shot the sheep! <laughs> Shoot the girl, okay. Uh, the piano? Rewind thing. 
Uh, I know exactly where to shoot. Right here! Hey, did it! What a manly man! Rip boat gambler in the corner pocket! I could have done it if I wanted to. I just didn't feel like it is all. Now when the townsfolk caught wind of how Ace had been cheating, the sheriff had no choice but to arrest him and return all the deeds. But no sooner had one brouhaha died than another started up. Yeehaw! Let's talk to Sam. Sam, what's going on? You got any idea? All I know is that someone paid some cow hands to stop in the middle of the cattle drive, come into town and shoot the place up. Don't know why. It's dangerous out there. A person might get shot. Yeah, but I figure they'll get bored sooner or later. Or they'll shoot at each other. Or something. Howdy, stranger. Well, we already talked to him. Well, I know exactly what we do. Act store! Act 4 start! We're gonna replace this... Replace this with... Four... B. Let's go. Bum, bum, bum. Shh, don't talk to me while I'm painting. <laughs> I forgot that I did that. Alright. So, we've got an issue. We need this laughing gas. We countered dozens of rowdy cow hands from the cattle drive outside of town who are carelessly firing guns everywhere and frightening, not to mention killing, the locals. Let's stampede the women and rape the cattle, they shout. Luckily, the rowdy, rowdy cowboys don't notice you from down below. Well, they messed up what they meant to say. We put the nitrous oxide there. They are not good with their words. Oh gosh, they're all shooting. I need to get out of here. Now we need to go this way. We gotta get to... Now we need our guns. You take a careful aim with your pistol, slowly squeeze off a shot. You did it! You shot off the canister's valve! Score. That's laughing gas! <laughs> <laughs> Phew! We did it! yip Rooney, Freddy Dunn made them cow hands laugh themselves to death with a well-placed bullet. Laughing gas? Yep. Of course, he didn't have much time to celebrate. The sheriff and the banker and their mysterious employer had figured that the mysterious silver eared stranger might be a little too much for them amateur rowdies to handle. That's what stops them? Yep! So they'd call in some big guns from down south just as backup, don't you know? And we gotta save again! Four C. Because I think we're gonna get crazy here. Uh oh. Uh oh. Hey, knock off the sound effects already. <laughs> Cowboys shooting their guns like Yosemite freaking Sam. Stop by laughing gas. What's that rotten smell? Oh no, it can't be. You recognize that smell from your old days as a lawman. More dangerous than Jesse James. Meaner than Johnny Ringo. Deadlier than William Mooney. More fun at cocktail parties than Rooster Cogburn. It's the legendary Lever Brothers. Yep, it's us, handsome silver-eared stranger. 
We're here to put six feet under. Under what? Your fervent prayer is that your few minutes of target faster with practice with Srini will be sufficient preparation for odds like this. Let's face it, I'm a wuss. <laughs> oh shit! We got stuff to do. <laughs> That's all you need to do in the easy mode. I'm just trying to go this quickly. With this refurb of shooting skills, Freddy was able to blast the Lever Brothers to smithereens. Now, with them informants out of the way, Freddy figured that was the end of the story, that somehow the Lever Brothers were responsible for everything that would be going on in town. She on the sides. <laughs> but Freddy was wrong. Lever Brothers had been hired for the task of getting rid of Freddy. Whomever hired the town and whomever was in cahoots with Sheriff Shift and E.H. Balance. And no sooner had Freddy's gun stopped smoking than he heard a familiar twang at the chords of someone's theme music. What was that? Uh oh. We're in trouble here. Load faster! Come on, you can do it! Uh... Game! Game! Don't tell me I gotta redo that. I think we froze, so... Time to restart that. We're close to finishing the game, I swear. Yeah! Star. Out we go. Great, gotta do it again. It won't be that bad. We'll just use e do easy mode again. Look at that. 863 points out of 999. We're close. <laughs> the sound effects are ridiculous there. I guess I'll save here soon. Just in case it freezes again. I couldn't save there, okay. Can I save here? <laughs> Alright, let's get shooting. Ah, oh, it was back there. go. With his reverse, blah 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 blah. Here we go. What was that? Who is this? Could it be? Nah. What would he be doing out here in the middle of nowhere? You haven't heard that chord in years, and yet here it is again, strangely recognizable after all this time. Those realistic screams, <laughs> though. Yeah. In your heart, you know it must be him, and yet, how did he find you? Will he be fooled by your disguise? Does he still eat paste? Kid, I want you out of town by sundown. Why, well, sure, stranger. I'll be riding out of town well before sundown. Leaving your sorry carcass for the buzzards to pick apart. Will not. Will too. Not. Too. I refuse to play this juvenile word game with you. I refuse to play this juvenile word game with you. What are you doing now? Repeating everything I say? What are you doing now? Repeating everything I say? So that's why they call you Kenny the Kid. 
because you're nothing but an immature little child, an anal retentive case of arrested development with an unresolved, though pettable, complex, and probably codependent to boot. No one, you were a punk when I found you stood back in St. Louis, but, and you're a punk now. Say your prayers, outlaw. Say your prayers, outlaw. Now cut that out! St. Louis. I didn't know anybody with a silver ear in St. Louis, yet you seem vaguely familiar. Maybe we'll have time to compare yearbook photos. In hell! I think I messed that up there. Did I shoot his gun? Out of his hand? Did I do it? Well, you knocked the gun out of my hand, hero, but it weren't good enough to keep me from hitting you first. Sorry I got a mite too sloppy when I pierced your ear there, har <laughs> har. I reckon you'll bled a few to death in a few moments, cause I can tell Penelope- What?! That you won't be interfering with her plans anymore. Penelope? What did he say? Your head's swimming, but you know you heard him say Penelope. Could it be? Could she be the cause of all this? Now we gotta save. This is the only place we can save. Act 4D. Now, we gotta prevent ourselves from bleeding to death, so... We weakly pull the neckerchief from around your neck, and we put it on our ear. You place your lucky neckerchief on your ear and press it on it to staunch the flow of blood. Never realize that there are major arteries running, or running through your ear. <laughs> With every ounce of strength, you pull yourself up and head towards the schoolhouse to see Penelope. Penelope the sweet. Penelope, your beloved. Penelope the traitor. Wait, was that supposed to happen? Yeah. Freddy dragged his bleeding self over to the schoolhouse. The anger and hurt was just ripping his gut like a swarm of bot flies on Roadkill. Only worse because Freddy, unlike Roadkill, was still alive. The schoolhouse door was unlocked for once. Freddy walked on right, right on in. Penelope, you traitor! We gonna save here? No, not replace that one. We're gonna replace uh, this one. Here we go. When Freddy was stepped inside, Penelope was standing at the desk packing in a hurry. She didn't even notice him come in. Gazing at her like that, Freddy saw her for the confined. Conniving and snake in the grass, she really was. All bitter hurt and betrayal and rage was too much for Freddy to hold down. It churned around inside him and finally welled up, bubbling to the surface in a furious storm of outrage as Freddy cried out, Hey, Penelope! What gives? Oh, why, it's you, a silver handsome eared stranger. Handsome silver eared stranger, you mean? Oh, right, I, uh, I thought Tenny, Kenny'd taken care of you. Are you kidding? He did just the opposite. He hurt me. Just look at my ear. Why, you poor man. Poor brave cowboy. You're wounded. Here, I'll tear this strip off my petticoat. Nelby placed her hands up to her bodice and began to slowly unbutton it. You know, ever since I saw you capture that big bad gambler at the saloon, I've been thinking about you. And then thinking about how I wanted you. She slowly slipped her hands under the fabric. This be my Penelope? Is it hot in here or is it just me? Am I the only one breaking out knives? Thinking about how I needed you. And before Freddy knew it, Penelope yanked a Deringer from her bosom and named it at him. Dead! Drop him, gunslinger! Now! Okay. <sighs> You resignedly unbuckle your holsters, letting your gun slip to the floor. Nelfi appears to relax a little, but her finger is still on the trigger of the derringer. Looks like she could shoot at any moment. Oops! You grab for the slate and whip it around, just in the nick of time. 
As you bend down to pick up your gun belt, Penelope hurls the deringer straight at your head. <laughs> Ouch. Well, as my pants fall down, yep. Before I kill you, Mr. Gunslinging Stranger Hero type, let's find out who you really are behind that silver ear. Freddy? You? Yes, it is. Yes, it is me. Yes, it is I. Boy, you can take the wickedness, villainous, book winking, double crossing, lying slut out of the school teacher, but you can't take the school teacher out of the wicked, villainous, book winking, double crossing, lying slut. Why, Penelope? Why? Why on earth have you done all this? I suppose I can tell you. You already know, know, you know too much already, so I can never let you leave. Brady Farkas? I just finished my education back in Western Pennsylvania at the local Meadville Normal School. I saw a small ad on the school bulletin board seeking teachers for a lovely little village out way out west. I wrote a letter of inquiry and was offered the position by the Core School Board of Education. They even sta sent me stagecoach fame. Soon after my arrival, which I, you saw in the prologue, I believe, I noticed the oily swamp behind the schoolhouse. Being a good Pennsylvania oil country girl, I had grasped immediately that Core School was literally oozing money. Never afford to buy mineral rights on the meager pittance they pay a single unwed female teacher, so I made a little a arrangement with Mr. Bounds. He foreclosed whichever mortgages he could and convinced Sheriff Schiff to shut down on everyone else. Bounds would get the land and buildings for a song and give me the mineral rights I wanted, as long as I gave him what he wanted. But Penelope, you seem to be such a sweet, innocent young woman. How could you be such a sleazebag? It had to be me, Freddy. Don't you see? It's always the person you least suspect. I didn't suspect Serini. Could it be him instead? It's a little late for that now. Wait, I really didn't suspect me! Well, if it's you, then I'm doing the town a favor by disposing of you, aren't I? Nelpie snickers cruelly, then ready me in her handbag. She eyes the lantern sitting on the newel post. Oops, how clumsy of me! Oh well, of course gold won't be needing a schoolhouse anyways. Well... Wait! There are a lot of other people I didn't suspect! Now... I gotta make sure I'm on. Oh god, it's lit. Okay, I'm still alive! And then we come on. There we go! Scooch over to Scooch the chair closer and closer to your precious silver ear, and ma just manage to snag it. It's metal, so let's sharpen it. Smart thinking, you frantically give the silver ear a few quick rubs on the stone floor. In a trice, the silver ear gets a sharp edge, ragged and rough, but sharp enough to be dangerous. Sharp ear. You hone your silver ear to deadly razor sharpness. Okay, let's cut these uh, ropes off. He managed to slice it into the ropes with a sharpened silver ear. Got it. just a few more things to do before we beat the game. Uh, let's save over horse problem. We're gonna stab people with the ear. You'll see. Act 4F. Replace. Here we go. Upstairs we go. Justice will be done, madame. I knew I shouldn't have wasted my time packing these cumulative grading folders. I shall allow you to choose the manner of your demise. Say what? Sorry, you took too long to decide. Penelope grabs one of the swords off the Civil War display above the blackboard. Let's grab it. Grab the other. Did I forget to mention downstairs that Meadville Normal had the nation's first female fencing team? Oh god, I'm going to die. Give me a break. <laughs> Time to do easy mode. I 
I don't know how to do this. Okay, we... I'm just clicking. We gotta corner her somehow. We're cornering her. Now we're just waving our arms around uselessly. Come on. I'll click as much as I need to. There we go. Curses! You foiled me! It's a foil. It's not a foil, it's a saber. A foil is straight and has two sharp edges, unless it's a smaller French foil, which is dull and used chiefly for thrusting. A saber like this one is curved and has one sharp edge. As a teacher and a member of the fencing team, you of all people should have known that. Oh no, defeated and corrected. Now I feel really bad. And thank God for my high school intramural sports program. Otherwise, I'd be Fredi Fettuccine Alfredi by now. It's him! Why, it's you! I recognize you now from the old neighborhood, Freddy something. Good to see you again, Kenny. I hope I didn't hurt your hand out there in the street. You know what we gotta do? Whoa, that was you out there? I didn't recognize you. Have you done something with your hair? Fettuccine <laughs> Alfredi. Not with my hair, Kenny, but with this. Yeah. Wielding your sharpened ear like a Chinese throwing star, you whip it across the room at Kenny, and it catches him right in the throat. Rx. Now we gotta escape. Boom. Epilogue, go rest, young man. It's time to sing again. Yes, sir, by gum, by cracky. About time to sing again. Be get ready. With his one good ear all mangled and grody, Freddy managed to leap from the schoolhouse just seconds before it went up in the biggest conflagration course gold ever seen. The truth came out about Penelope and how she'd been plotting to buy up the oil rice. There was no earthly way she could have survived the bet at last. Still, it were curious how they never recovered her body. Sheriff Shift and PH Balance were run out of town on a rail. The townsfolk leased the oil rice to some big developers. Soon everybody was rolling in dough, sprucing up the town, and revitalizing coarse gold. Me? I eventually found my weapon and I followed Gunta. Don't remember dropping it. Must have had a spell of stupidity or something. As, as for Freddy, well, he made himself another couple of silver prosthetics. Yeah, one to replace the ear that Kenny just shot, uh, and one to replace the silver ear that ended up fatally lodged in Kenny's windpipe. Well, with all the fuss, Freddy was able to keep his gunsling an identity secret, and it were a good thing too, because Freddy's adventures was far from over. A sequel, a sequel was never made, though, sadly. But that little nipper is another story. Now get off my lap, you're starting to come hack my vitals. Time to sing again. Now the old times will remember how the old schoolhouse was blown to embers, though Miss Brody was never ever found. The real sheriff and the banker. But the toast of course called red with anger so darn feathered they ran him out of town. And Trini, he became an ordinary wreck salt to be shaming down on the peak coast, where engine hearts still burn. While the folks hope safe from danger, talk about that silver earlobe stranger, where did he come from? Marcus, Freddy Marcus, black gold fields were his legacy, Freddy Marcus, Freddy Marcus, I am fearless, fearless and free. Did you finish the game? Yes! Oh, I missed it all! <laughs> 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 
Adam says hi. His two silver ears gleam. We did it! And yeah, it's sad that a Farkas sequel for Freddy Farkas was never made. It's sad. Like, they, they tease a sequel and then it never comes out. The end. <laughs> now here we go, we got some credits to watch. Why not? Allo and Josh Mandel. That's some crazy game. Director and producer, Josh Mandel. Art designer, Bob Gleason. Lead programmer, Steve Conrad. Composer, Aubrey Hodges. Directed by Michael Payne. <laughs> Lead animator, Karen A. Young. Ruben Holmes. Character designer. Programmers. William R. Schluckley, Cynthia L. Swafford, and someone else that I didn't read. Artist animators. I know relation Williams. Bob Gleason. I can't read that fast. Quality assurance. That guy. Dick. <laughs> Customer service license. Those people. Freddy, you? Why, Penelope, why? Why on earth have you done all this? I suppose I can tell you knew, you know too much already so I can never let you live. I had just finished my education back in western Pennsylvania at the local Meadville school, normal school. These are bloopers, yes. Wait, Josh, can I ask a question? Cut! Shelly, how many times are we gonna do this scene? It's just that I don't understand my motivation for this speech. <laughs> oh, jeez. I mean, why would Penelope reveal all this to Freddy? Why doesn't she just kill him and get on with it? Just do it, alright? I want to get home tonight. This is about acting, Gil. You wouldn't know anything about it. <laughs> Shell, it's just a plot device so that the audience understands what's going on. Otherwise, we leave a lot of unanswered questions. Can we put it in the manual instead, Joshy, sweetie? It's so dull. No, then they might read it before they finish the game. Ready to take it again? I suppose. And action! Penelope would be excellent at some of the same things. Ding! And there are some, a few other bloopers. I think, like, two more, I think? Oh, like, it's like three more, I think. Ow! Oh god, you hit me again! You really hit me! Cut! Yes, I'm cut and I'm bleeding too! I hope it's serious. I'm gonna sue. This is what happened to Margaret Hamilton, you know. Where are you bleeding? My finger! He'll never pick his ear with that finger again. You shut up. This is all your fault. Can you suffer through one more take, Gil? Sure, Joshua, and I'll bleed to death, but you'll have your game. That's what you want, isn't it? So come on, let's do it. What are we waiting for? Come on, let's go! There's the pain, directed at Shelly. All right! <laughs> Freddy's actor is named Gil, and Penelope's actor is named Shelly. <laughs> well, my formal fellow, I am but a weary traveler from a the land far, far away. Cut! What was wrong with the that? The accent slipped, Antonio. 
What are you talking about? That was a birthday. You don't know an Indian accent if she hits you in over the head. I didn't hear any Italian creeping creeping in. I thought it was pretty good. I'm gonna go into my trailer. I can't work under these conditions. You call up my agent. You don't like my accent. Antonio, don't walk on the ants. Ants? Ha! That's what I think of your lousy ants. He steps all over them. Mike and Antonio's agent on the phone. Steve, get the rest of the programmers down here. Here. He'll take five. <laughs> <laughs> Who is going to defeat the ants? It is I. Stunt! Stunt double! Hey, I said stunt double! I'm not doing this jump myself, I could break my neck. Gil, just do it. Yeah, right, like that's in my contract. My stunt double is supposed to handle this. She can't. She quit yesterday. <laughs> She's got a. He's got a female stun double. What? What? People, people, work with me here. I'm sensing reluctance. Now, please just do the jump before we lose the assay set. All right? Doesn't this scene take place at night? We're shooting day for night. It's cheaper. The artist will they'll fix it in post production. Oh, I see. Off the set, Millie. But I wanted to watch Gil break his neck. Get out! He's nervous enough about doing the scene without you watching him. This is ridiculous. I swear I'll sue if something goes wrong. This is what happened to Margaret Hamilton, you know. Just do it. And action! Ow! Workers come! Workers come! Cut! <laughs> Woo. Special thanks to those guys. Okay, I think that's all the credits. This adventure game is work efficient, is particularly long, but a lot of the general hope we can get away with everything we said and did in the game. If not, we'll just fall back on the old people and events described here and bear no relations to any pe people, real or imagined people, and events simple. A total of 34 animals were injured or maimed in the making of this game. After all, you wanted complete realism. <laughs> wow. And, uh, yeah, that's the game. You're you done real good, kid. Your final score was a thousand out of nine hundred and ninety-nine points. Your mom would be so proud. Yeah! We we took advantage of a glitch and got more points than we than we actually should have got. Yeah! <laughs> Woo! I don't know what I'm gonna be what game I'm going to be streaming next though. <laughs> that was fun. I better think of some stuff. Uh, that's gonna be it for now. So uh, what to do next time? I could go back to Master of Magic. That's a good one to go back every once in a while. Like it's just a good game to open up, play sometimes. I'm slowly getting better at it too. And we are the fearless wizard! Imagine. Next time we do something. Pretty much. That was it for the tonight. And next time I am definitely going to be changing the sound to score. I'm going to be changing it to that sound. And it'll be wonderful. It'll be beautiful. Cherry chapstick. Not cherry. Strawberry jello. Alright, talk to you later. Bye, Adam. And that's it, folks. Goodbye.